Welcome back, everybody, to the Victory World World Cup of Pokemon VUC, sponsored by Elgato, Metafy, and GG Tour. I'm once again joined by Evan, and we are going to be looking at a very fantastic match between our fellow caster, David Partington, and someone who Evan says they adore lots and lots, Marcus Statter, one uh, arguably one of the best players in Germany, possibly the world and history of VGZ. So it's going to be a good one to look forward to. And it's going to be a lot of back and forth tussle because both players know the game very well and have had the accolades to show how well they know it and why they should win this match. Yep. And you guys have seen a little bit of a spoiler, you know, in between the matches just now. You could see the teams um, both players brought. So that could be a little like Easter egg or a little um, teaser as to what's going to happen and the exciting match that we're going to see. And some people in chat have been asking, right, where is Wolfie? Is Wolfie playing? Here we have Wolfie's, one of Wolfie's best friends, uh, Marcus, and he is representing Germany. Uh, so by, by, by the way, Wolfie is not playing in our World Cup. I think he's kind of too busy. So let me just introduce Marcus real quick. So he actually achieved uh, top four in the 2016 World Championships, the very uh, tournament that Wolf won. So, and he also got three times international champion, two times national champion, and two times regional champion. And in this season of Sword and Shield, uh, Marcus, both players have qualified for, for Worlds, David, David and Marcus. And Marcus actually achieved pretty good results in um, NAIC, top 32, EUIC, top 8, and also top 32 in Bremen. So doing very well in the Series 12 tournaments live events that we have seen thus far yeah and then david on the other hand you know hasn't got the all these world championship placements the national champion placements but you know as a fellow caster we will back him up you know he had his really good win in the bristol regional championships which was very mm -hmm. condemned small event using i believe a dust main across the team when it was kind of undiscovered time in the format and a couple of top six across the 2018 through 2020, so 3DS and Switch era. So showing that he has got, you know, the knowledge and the ability to play through the game and, you know, isn't a threat to be to not be, you know, push aside because he has that experience in the restricted metas and also has a lot of experience in the Sword and Shield metas. Coming in with that team, you saw in the interlude section there with the common Zashi and Groudon core, supported by, you know, Incineroar, Venusaur, something you see quite a lot along these two, and Grimmsnarl, Thunderous, just two supportive slash offensive Pokemon, depending on what role they have. And then alongside that, we have Marcus showing a Trick Room orientated team with Sableye at this time and Ditto, and that double ground typing, a uh, steel typing, sorry, so ground is going to be a bit of a threat with that ground on coming mm -hmm. in field. We'll have to see how Marcus decides to play around that, you know, whether that be with, like, Will-O-Wisps or maybe ally switches or whatever he can come across to stop David in his track. Both players definitely proving to be very good in this double restricted format. I think David's win in 2019, that's quite poetic because um, the Crossma Dusk main, I believe, is the mascot for Team UK. So here, we're going to jump into this match. And before we begin, I just want to say some World Cup history here. So last year in the first ever World Cup, um, Germany was actually eliminated by UK in the qualifiers. It was a very tough group. Peru, UK, Germany and Costa Rica together in the same group. And here, I would think like Germany is here out for revenge um, towards UK. Uh, I think Jamie Boyd does have something to say about this. But let's go into the leads. Uh, David actually goes with uh, Thunderous and we do see kind of a mixed set here and Grimmsnarl versus a Sableye and Dialga lead. And from what we have seen in Sableye, um, uh, piloted in some of the regionals, it's certainly quite a difficult mon to deal with because it has a lot of options and kind of a very good form of speed control. Yeah, it has speed control in Quash. It has speed control, control across the board. It has you know, Will-O-Wisp. I don't believe it has Trick Room, but it can leave our Pokemon team for that. And Dialga, you know, going big here, threatens straight away some nice max steel spikes, and max dragon and max worm winds, which is something that you see, you know, could quite a lot, you know, just to stop any potential boost from the reef from coverage and, you know, mitigate oh. any offensive moves. Ice Witch comes out though, so anything going into that slot will be put off. Of course, the prankster naturally on the poke on the Grimstar will make it faster in this situation. 
unless it is a slower prankster variant of the thunderous the eerie impulse now goes into the sable eye we need a nice big max steel spike can come out onto the grim snarl with even with that light screen it's gonna grab a knockout was that a crit is that a, was a crit that said oh. could matter unless we see a possible life orb from the dialga and the defense boost can be very nice into, in front of what we have seen is a physically defensive thunderous and there's that life orb so that crit might have had a small smidge of a matter avid straight away behind in front of a pokemon that can do a lot of damage you know to to you know to his pokemon here of course scared of not scared of a possible max dragon because if it's a defiant thunderous it's a love seeing those Mm -hmm. What a very interesting like turn of events there. We actually see three potential uh, prankster mons come out on the field. And we saw light screen go first, so uh, Grimmsnarl is probably faster, followed by Sableye. And it kind of confirms that Thunderous is the Defiant set. And it's a very good tech for Thunderous to have Eerie Impulse, right? Because it's generally faster than quite a lot of those special attackers out there in Dialga and maybe Kyogre. So going for that um, Eerie Impulse, but unfortunately gets caught by Marcus's play of going straight for a turn one ally switch. Very interesting mind games of revealing ally switch even in turn one and game one of this match. Yeah, revealing ally switch straight away does put pressure on David to call the switch correctly. It also does put pressure on Marcus to think when he can go for the eye switch. The Dynamite's coming out, Thunderous is, you know, gonna be happy to go into that Sableye. If it does ally switch, it's gonna go into Dialga, which is gonna take either its stabs really well. And you know, Groudon is forced into it more of a supportive situation, defensive, and the trick comes out, Iron Ball on Thunderous and a Lumberry onto Sableye. So Venus Robert comes in, isn't doing much to that Sableye as the max hailstorm comes out now and does about 50 percent there to the thunderous which is absolutely amazing because you know it's going to put it in a space where another one's going to get a knockout and it doesn't have to go for those attack drops which will boost it with defiant the oh, storm oh. comes out so that defense boost is now efficiently you know gone because of that swords dance as max airstream comes out now so Gradon could be faster than dialga we'll have to see going on to these later turns. So many interesting like speed related interactions here because um, we do see the item reveal on the Sableye going for the trick and um, sort of grounding Thunderous and more importantly lowering Thunderous speed by half at the same time. Thunderous is going for uh, Max Airstream this turn uh, targeting into the Sableye because it's not super effective into the Dialga which makes a lot of sense and I kind of missed the um, the hail interaction there, but it's quite a it's quite a good heads up play to use Thunderous's Dynamax Airstream to boost both um, the physical attackers on David's side up. I think that Swords Dance that was an amazing play. Um, probably like going for a call that the Alga maybe won't target into Groudon and just letting Groudon get that plus two attack off for free. Yeah, getting that plus two attack for free is kind of scary for these Pokemon that aren't going to like taking the, the sorry not the Max Blade, the Precipice Blades, but Press and Miss Blades, as we call it, they can miss, so Mark <laughs> has to rely on maybe a low roll or knowing his count, or that there's just those misses. So, you know, loads of things can happen in this matchup, and it, it is so scary to see. As you see, the will o -Wisp come out from the Sableye, but there is the miss, so oh. possibly going to mitigate out as the Precipice Blades misses the knockout on a Dialga. Gets rid of the Sableye, the crit on the same as well. Where not that matter, Sableye isn't the bulkiest Pokemon. Yes, players often run maybe like Max Defense or Bulk on it to kind of get the upper play on the field. Max Hailstorm comes out, goes into that Zacian. So David playing well into Marcus, not wanting to go for a Max Wormwind to drop attack stats to fear that Defiant. So it means that Groudon can keep its attack stats boosted and Zacian can come in nice and freely. And it can probably go for a Secret Sword and get the knockout on this Dialga mean that David can take the flow of the game a step forward in his behalf and then Marcus have to keep thinking, you know, based on what he has in the back, maybe shift it back into his position, like we had with the last match where Trick Room you know, is going up, the slow Pokemon are having to work out what to do to get the game state again. True. That was actually a very interesting switch mid-Dynamax, right? 
the Thunderous only managed to get off one airstream, understanding that Thunderous has the iron ball and not wanting to risk any speed calculations. I thought that was a good switch into um, Zacian on hindsight because Dialga actually went for the hailstorm into the deep. The Zacian and the Zacian soaked it up really well. But this time, speaking of Zacians, Marcus still has that ace up his sleeve and has that steel type um, Zacian in the back. And um, we are still like, not we still don't know the speed interactions between both Zacians. So this is a turn to kind of find out um, which which Zacian is faster and, and potentially take important KOs. Yeah, having the fastest action is always something you want to have in this format. If not, having the bulkiest action that can then take the knockout on the fastest action, it's one of those Pokemon where, you know, if you're fast, you can get a knockout, but you could risk bulk, lead, and line. But if you're bulky, you know, you don't have the speed, but you could also risk your attacking stats, you know, to get that bulk. And Zash is one of those Pokemon where it has to find that perfect mid ground on most mm -hmm. sets to go and get those knockouts. Of course, it could carry Sword Stance, but. Yeah, we, we, we don't know that yet, and it's going to come down to these speed ties, which you see the opposing Zacian, though, from Marcus. will be protecting. I mean, it's another turn going for that, but the Sacred Sword comes out onto the Dialga, so a great call. If we see a Sword Stance here on the Groudon, that'll be an amazing play, because it's going to mean it's even powerful. It's going to go for that Precipice Blade, though, not too scared of the Zacian. And Mar Marcus, again, falling behind, and David having the upper hand of his boosted Groudon. And I think... Yeah, I think what's going on here, uh, I, I think I know what's going on here. Um, Marcus is trying to scout out the speed stats and yes, the Ditto is in the back because the Ditto can easily copy um, David's Zashan and even get another um, boost, the Intrepid Sword boost of its own. So uh, Marcus is actually playing pretty safe to ensure that um, the Ditto gets a good switch in, knowing that the Dialga is probably going to go down. Another thing to note here is that Based on the hail interactions, we do see David's um, Zashin at, uh, like at neutral um, take hail damage before his own Groudon, which goes to show how um, the Groudon is trained. It's probably bulky because the Groudon actually got uh, an airstream boost from the Thunderous, but yet it still took hail chip um, slower than the Zashin. So at this position, Ditto can just fire off um, potentially a Scarf uh, Behemoth Blade and um, sort of like do very very significant damage into David's Pokemon. Yeah, and we do see that Behemoth Blade come out. We will see from the side of animation that is natural as Zacian as it does grab the knockout onto David's Zacian, which meaning that the, the Ditto Zacian is going to be really hard to keep track of with this game. It's going to go through <laughs> the blade, but into that protect, and with the, that plus two attack, it's going to be very scary, especially if it has that Choice Scarf, it's going to be fast. If it is Choice Scarf, it's revealing no safety goggles or some ditto have to carry in mm -hmm. low percentages of the meta game. And then Thunderous is forced to come in here and of two Zacian, which is something you never really want to see. Like if I saw that, I'd be scared of that. Yeah. And here um David's Thunderous switches in and we do know that Thunderous has the iron ball and it forfeit its uh, airstream boost just now. Uh something that I noticed just now is that Marcus's <laughs> Zacian on the right took Hail Chip before the Ditto. So I feel like there might be some form of speed ties all around and Ditto might be holding a different item like maybe Quick Claw or Focus Sash. Yeah, Ditto often have to have that, you know, that flexibility with its items. You see it does go for that Behemoth Play into the Groudon. And it is just one of those scary things where if it's got Quick Claw, it can have that trip that have that choice scarf without needing to have a choice mm -hmm. scarf. If it has Sash, unfortunately for Marcus, it has been broken by the hail. But, you know, it could be something scary. It could be choice banned for all we know to get even further attack boosts. Something something scary like that, you know. Marcus is a player who can have all these creative ideas and is never really scared, you know, to go of them. But it looks like he has won this game safe where David looked like he had the upper hand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, game two has to be interesting that both players know the possibilities what is on the field. Yeah, I feel like playing against a team with Ditto is really very difficult to maneuver because even if you get like good boosts on your personal Pokemon, like for example David Zashin, right? There's no intimidate on Marcus's side, so you know, it can be free to like 
stay on the field and get that plus one, but unfortunately, Dito is in the back. Uh, and we also saw that, you know, both, like, Marcus's Zashan was still able to um, take out David Zashan. I, I have a strong feeling there's some form of speed tie. Yeah, and here we reveal the, the quick claw, so I feel like, like, like Marcus's Zashan is the one that's faster, and um, his Dito with the quick claw um, copies David's Zashan's abilities. Sorry if I'm confusing everybody here, but um, both having both this Dito and the Zashan really help um, Marcus close out the end game with that speed uh, advantage. Yeah, having both Zashans move first, I think with that um, protect that turn, the very important turn of protecting his own. Zashan from a potential plus plus two um, ground on precipice blades. Um, Marcus played very well and maneuvered the Dito in smartly to try and close out the game, and he surely did. Yeah, having that Dito come in the late game just so you essentially know what you're treating it onto really does benefit the user because you know if he got the ground on, then that would have been a really powerful that would have been a really powerful ground on because it had it would have mm -hmm. had quick claw ability to proc. It would you know. So, and it would have been bulky because Groudon's not actually bulky. So it could have taken some some nice hits and dealt some nice hits back. Copying that Zashium was very, very pivotal because it got this it got an extra intrepid sword boost. It had the quick claw, so it could be even faster. And it also gave an insight into David's version of Zashian, just to kind of know the speed tier. So we know there's probably no speed ties, unless it was a three-way speed tie, which is something that you know you rarely ever see in VGC, but something that our players can keep in mind. And something that could really push going forward because maybe we could see David win a speed tie later, or maybe just have that slight bit of bulk that speed tie doesn't really matter. But that's down to our players to conceal or our players to reveal as we jump into game two here. And we see Marcus send out Sableye and Dialga yet again, looking to go for that bulky lead, the ally switch lead, go from straight out of fence. And we see Venusaur plus Thunderous here. And we could see David go straight for that switch, try and get the ground on in. To go for a nice sleep powder or we can just see him you know try and get some nice little taunts down whatever of course because it is a defiant thunderous taunt isn't going to be blocked on the saber life for being a dark type with the new effect of prankster and venusaur being somewhat fast you know might be faster than dialga we don't quite know yet couldn't go for maybe a max quake or a sleep powder just to kind of set a bit of a pace on the field and get that bump going yeah a very useful lead here and um, probably like forcing sort of a fake out coming out from Sableye because Venusaur in this team composition of Davids would most probably hold a Sash. So on this turn, it could be quite difficult for Dialga to kind of try and choose a KO. Um, if you're running a Dialga team, especially a Dialga with Zashan, most of the time your lines, your game plans would be to Dynamax turn one. And sure enough, we see that Dynamax come out here. The Sableye is really a very wild card coming out from Marcus because it can easily go for um, the ally switch that could um, play out well. So this is really um, David David's turn to call. Yeah, David would have to call the turn right as the ally switch does come out here. And, you know, that mind game comes yet again. The taunt goes into what is now the Dialga. Dialga, you know, sometimes carries Trick Room. You know, or maybe it, it has Protect possibly, which you can't use in that couple of turns, but that doesn't matter. As the Venusaur takes that hit fairly well, I believe, through a Protect. And, yep, through a Protect there. And, you know, the pace is set again. The Hail is going to be chipping down. Groudon can come in now quite safely, but we could, you know, because the Asleep part of our Ally Switch threatens more and more. Yeah, given, you know, given how David is having to orientate himself on this match. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very interesting like move choice from Marcus Marcus's Dialga because he understands that there are three mons that David is most probably gonna bring. Um Venusaur, Thunderous, whom we see on the field, and that Groudon in the back. So all these mons are weak to um Max Hailstorm, weak to ice. And I think that's a very interesting choice. And um it's good that David's Venusaur went for protect because it does cover the option and um, I would say Thunderous kind of has another turn to move. I think um, David's bring of this Venusaur is pretty um, strategic because speed is quite important here. Regardless of whether Sableye um, ally switches or not, you can probably switch into um, Groudon and try and go for the Sleep Powder as soon as possible. And over here, 
um, a very good like choice of Willow Wisp into this physical slot. It covers both the Thunderous staying in and also the Groudon switch in. Yeah, covering the possibility of a Groudon switch in or a Zacian switch in, or just a nice physical attack from the Thunderous does really, yeah, was a good play there. It does cover a lot of bases. The crit possibly didn't matter too much because of the, you know, sheer power of Dialga. Mm -hmm. Venusaur, when it's small, isn't the bulkiest Pokemon, but that area impulse is going to be a cause of concern for Marcus because his you know, his special attack, which relies on heavily, you know, is gone. It, well, he's not gone, but it's going, and Sableye has no way to reset that. And if he, if David calls the ally switch is right, he can just keep getting it down and down whilst the Swords Dance come out, ground on, and could change the flow of the game again to have that that attacking prowess that he started to have in game one. Of course, Marcus, you know, could read into that and could just go. He can't even protect because of the taunt. But he's just forced to go for damage and is forced to possibly try and get his defense boosts or maybe go for a max one win for that stab and you know nice damage but also risk the attack boost on the defiant thunderous so it is a scary situation given that area impulse and david can force them you know but to see what happens of course to save like we nuisance and david starts up a pokemon and so does marcus yeah i would say well played on both ends like the area impulse was so good but the, probably the sheer power of Dialga was the factor that managed to take out the um, Venusaur. And I got a strong feeling that both the Dialga and Venusaur might be speed tying. I did not really um, notice the um, the hail interaction, but Venusaur and Dialga do have the same um, speed stat, if I'm not wrong. And over here, um, Thunderous like, really trying its best to do its job. Um, Eerie Impulse is very useful. And then here, calling that the Sableye does not ally switch and um, correctly goes for the taunt. Um, and I do hope that the Groudon here is going for a sword stance to kind of mitigate uh, the will o -Wiz. And sure enough, we see it. And this is pretty useful for David in stalling out um, Dialga's Dynamax. Yeah, stalling out Dialga's Dynamax is an option for David, but there is the burn there. And Dialga can just go for max steel spikes or max worm wins quite safely now mm -hmm. because of the lack of the Thunderous on the field. And of course, with that, Zacian can come in safely, but you know, I should say, like, can't Willowis. I'm sorry, I was going to say I can Willowis, but being taunted, it's stuck into a possible foul play, which is still going to be a lot of damage onto Ivory's Pokemon with their high attack stats. So, possibly a detriment going for those strong moves and their strong switch ins. Alga goes small, so it's not going to have those ability to go for those stat boosting or stat dropping moves. I'll we'll have to call Protect right and get some big damage off. Maybe switch, reset its stats, come back in later, you know bit more sense of, of healthy case of mind you know be like okay i could go for a nice strong flash cannon nice strong draco meteor roar of time get big damage down on these pokemon just slowly getting neutered by hail by burn by possible future willow wisps if save life sticks around long enough yeah i feel like david is really really trying his best to really get in the game and successfully stalling out dynamax here uh and getting the torn onto the sableye so that could be useful but Unfortunately, like the, the Ditto feels like it's always looming in the back together with Marcus's Zashin. So I think from here on out, David really has to call the turns right. And all the Mons, like technically, right, if the Ditto turns into a Zashin, all the Mons are weak to Max Quick. So um, Dynamaxing the Groudon is a 100% play here. You have to do it and you really have to make sure you take those KOs. Uh, I do saw I, I saw that David is double targeting the um with the, the, the Sableye and that makes a lot oh no he actually went for Sacred Sword into the Dialga and went for uh, Max Quake into the Sableye. I was thinking if you go into the Sableye uh, then you kind of force the Ditto to come in on the Groudon uh, come in on the Zashin slot then hopefully Groudon should be able to deal with Zashin because now if the Ditto copies the Zashin, it could be very tricky. Uh, sorry, if the Ditto copies the Groudon, it could be very tricky because uh, Groudon does threaten super effective damage into David's Zashin. Yeah, and you know, seeing that foul play as well do so much to Groudon means mm -hmm. that a quick core proc on the opposing one from that Ditto switch in means that a lot of damage can go through. As the Zashin does come in though, no speed boosts on the Groudon. That means that this mm -hmm. is going to be coming down to which Sashian, again, is faster, which we do believe is Marcus Sashian. So Groudon may be forced to go for a Protect. We know it's not Assault Vest, so it can go for that Protect. 
but then you know it's going to be back and forth if you call the Zacian protect right you get a knockout on the Groudon possibly if you call the Groudon protect right you get a, you could get a knockout or a nice bit of damage on the Zacian it's very scary in this situation a lot of 50 50s that David is forcing Marcus to calculate and it's going to come down to which player gets that 50 50 correct and how far they can produce afterwards of course Dalga gone means there's you know no strong Pokemon coming through Ditto coming in could be a bit of a, a strong measure if we see a, uh, a quick claw proc into the Precipice Blades, but that's a lot of luck having to risk, having to rely on. You see Sableye switching out though, so possibly Ditto comes in, it is coming in, so it is going to be turning to that Zacian. So, really scared of that Max Quake, of course it is burned, but still at plus two. Yeah, I think Marcus's Zacian should um, logically target into the Groudon, so we really need to see whether this Groudon survives. Because if the Groudon does, um, targeting the Max Quake into Ditto would be an excellent play. But yeah, unfortunately, like the because of this Dynamax factor, right? Behemoth Blade does double into a Dynamax Groudon. Um, then it we do see that it takes the KO. So things are really looking very very rough for David. Yeah, I just want to shout out again, you know, we're seeing three Zashans on the field, so sometimes VGC is a very um, wild and epic game. And unfortunately, David's Zashan just misses the KO on Marcus's Zashan. We, yeah, we confirm now that Marcus's Zashan is always the one taking um, Hail Chip, followed by um, David, and then followed by the Ditto, because the Ditto speed ties with David's Zashan. Yeah, having the speed side of the Zashian, you know, at this point in the game isn't the scariest, but, you know, because it has because it has the quick claw, you can have to rely on things, so David's having to work out, maybe if he targets the right one, he can, you know, work around things, of course, if the, sword, if the Hail Chip gets rid of the true Zashian, then that means mm -hmm. that they uh, Marcus is relying on getting something like a quick claw proc, but then will o can just come out, or Fake Out can come out, Mm -hmm. on the stable eye in the back so i do believe marcus most likely has his game unless there's some really insane luck in david's part both players are played routers we do see the true Zashian does switch out in the stable eye so it can get a, it can you know come back in quite safely over the, to the hail the human player goes off but if it does go off into the true into the Zashian, Whoa. that's a great call there it oh. still lives maybe with like revealing bulk on behalf of David, and that means that Marcus can come through and most likely get a knockout. It does, and Ditto is going to be taking a nice KO there, putting Germany another win up over the UK, meaning that they're going to have that back and forth tussle that we've seen in the past couple of results on this stream. Yeah, so probably Germany here um, taking the revenge that they've always wanted for one whole year. But wow, well, look at those interactions with the Behemoth Blades on the Zashan. I think it's such a pity that David Zashan wasn't able to take those key KOs. Uh, and like the Ditto actually copied the Zashan's bulk, so um, it, it's kind of telling. So I think David really needed some crits um, to try and get out of the game. And I thought that final turn where um, we do know that the Hail Chip would take out Marcus's Zashan and he switched it out into Sableye, um, preserving the Zashan, the faster Zashan in the back. I thought that was a good play and it probably covered a lot of his bases and he really thought through the last few turns of the game there. Yeah, think, think of your last few game turns of both games. You know, it's something that players like him can do. He can, he can really focus on, you know, the early game might not go too well, but if he can pivot in the end game well enough, he can turn a bad situation to a good one, and that's what Marcus did. David, of course, was doing very well to try and stop that late game from happening and just trying to use his wits, you know, taunt on things that normally can't be taunted because of certain Pokemon. And the again, Aerium posses down, but the Pokemon on Marcus' side just showed they had the sheer power, like Dialga getting those knockouts. I didn't expect to see it. You know, I've mm -hmm. rarely ever seen Dialga, but when I've seen it, it's done loads of damage, and it just shocks me each time. And these Pokemon you haven't really seen pop up because Zashin always feels like the stronger... Uh, steel type but you know at the end of the day the players both tried their best and this rivalry will go back and forth marcus showed that why he's on top of these podium players every time he goes into the tournament yeah very similar to the executor team that you guys saw earlier i think this um zashan dialga team with that ditto in the back and 
the Sableye being that kind of X factor, uh, I think that could be some form of um, inspiration for our players moving forward, right? And this also goes to show that even in um, Series 12, we are probably six months into the meta and like people can still show up with a lot of spice and very good creativity, uh, even in a community like run tournament um, in our World Cup. And just want to go through again, right, the teams that we saw. Uh, in the first match, it was a Lunadon Mirror, right, India versus Norway. And in the second match, it was a very good chess match between Australia and Ireland with like that Incineroar, Rillaboom, Water type. There was a Kyogre, there was a Blastoise. And then the game three was the craziest. So game three was like a, um, from Norway, right? It was all, uh, sorry, from Sweden. It was an all special attack, like special attacker team with that Calyrex and Kyogre. And then from Turkey, we saw like something we've never seen before, like the hardest of hard trick room teams with five Pokemon that actually can set up trick room. So what a treat for today. I'm really happy to be able to like cast and bring these games to you guys. It's so fun.